Carlson to play it. Cleo. Hasler. Melrose. Close. Back to Melrose. Nice piece of hands by Melrose. And tackled is Matthew Loft. He's only a 20-year-old. He's a manly junior. And I think this is the first time as Hasler looks to unload. I think it's the first time that Matthew Loft has run on with the, uh, the Manly first grade side. That's a penalty to Manly. He's got the marker for not standing directly in front of the man playing the ball. That's Matthew Loft, the 20 year old, before 83, played with the, the Valley United Harbour Junior Club. He's played two first grade games with Manly, but both as a replacement, as the, the details on the screen show. Well, that was the second time in a row, this penalty you're watching now, that's the second time in a row where McCallum had the, the chance, I suppose, of penalising either side. But he obviously took the first breach. And uh, Canterbury on the wrong side of Lady Luck on both occasions. Brown, hand off to Cleal. Cleal towards the 22 line. Mortimer telling players to shuffle left. As it goes to Vorton, he cuts back, and that's back to Brown. And hand it down to Melrose. There's a chance on for the Eagles. He's going to score this Grimsway quarter. If he can get over the fullback, he does. Dale Shearer picks up the first try and indeed the first points of the match. A beautiful switch of play by Captain Paul Vorton. Tony Melrose did his job. In fact, I was about to comment here that it reminded me of Wally Lewis and a, a passage of play that he uses a lot to great effect. Melrose was the man with the ball there, and then Shearer took it nicely. Brown did his job, but it was a, a neat switch of play by Paul Vorton that led to the manly try. It was great play here by Tony Melrose in particular. It went through two sets of hands. When Melrose got it, he had to sum up play well, got his hands free in the tackle. It went on to Shearer, became one-on-one -on -one with full-back Potter from Canterbury Banks down. He wasn't strong enough to affect the tackle. And in goes Shearer for the opening points of the match. Shearer, 20 years of age, came from Serena in North Queensland and has played twice only with the Manly Club. And that try would... Uh, Doing the world of good, confidence-wise. So Melrose has a kick from three metres in and on the Canterbury 22. Four nils to Manly at the moment. He's hooked it badly, and so the scoreline remains. In the NEC big game, Manly four, Canterbury yet to score. He's kicking into the breeze, and all manly, I would think, and coach Bob Fulton would be very happy if they can hold this 4-0 lead until half-time and come around with the breeze in the second stanza. Here's uh, Kelly. And now Kelly is tackled again after tapping it ahead. Canterbury in a very, very dangerous position on the ground for Manly. Here's Potter. Now Farrar. Farrar stands in the tackle of close, finds Potter. Then Steve Mortimer, and he's put down over the line. In fact, the last metre of the uh, Steve Mortimer journey was aided and abetted by the manly tackle from young Mel Cochran. You'll see it here. Steve Mortimer was working for this try and the ball eventually finds its way back to him as potter came into the play it went to farrah and this is where it starts its journey back in field and into the arms of steve mortimer and then watch the tackle of cochran he actually flings him over the line he had him and let him down four points all Steve Mortimer started it all and then he finished it. We can see here that he shuffled a lot across to his right-hand side, fired a pass out across the back line to Potter. Potter really had run into a lot of trouble, so he switched the ball quickly onto Farrah, who, as soon as he was held in the tackle, turned the pass back inside again. It missed Lamb and picked up Potter again. Potter back to Mortimer, unfortunately for Mal Crock, and he didn't realise how close he was to the line and tackles you make in your own in goal don't count. So Chris Mortimer is taking only his second shot at goal. His previous was from right in front. Missed it. Here he is from 20 metres out. He's missed that too. 
So the scoreline at Brookvale remaining Manly Canterbury at 4-4. Under 60 seconds of the first half remaining. Daly to play it right on the halfway. Batiste, number 10, he's on the ground uh, injured. Cleo. Away from Lamb. Oh, he's picked up close. Close is like a runaway tram. He'll score. Close. Close and Cleo. They've put it together back to back. And Close has scored. He would have run through the uprights, I reckon. So determined was he. Have a look at these two. Giants of rugby league. Cleo standing up saying who wants it. And then Close. He came bursting onto it. Poor Michael Potter. He had no hope in the world. You can teach a man to tackle, but you can't teach him to stop a runaway man like Chris Close. Built like a mountain, both of them. Noel Cleal stood in the tackle, looked for support, and it came in the fourth form of Chris Close, and have a look on his face. He set his sights on the try line, and there's no way that anyone's going to stop him. He went through one tackle from fullback Potter, shrugged off another one from Fobes, and plunges over to score a tremendous try for the Sea Eagles. Try to the Eagles. See it again. Try scorer, Christopher Close from Queensland. Melrose from right in front. This time we've got ourselves a goal. And that was a jolting tackle on Hasler. That was a hell of a tackle on Hasler. Let's have another look at this one. No, well, the crap. The final. The final. Uh, view of it as far as the tackle was concerned was that there was nothing illegal but folks has been sent off and I'll tell you what it was not sent off as 10 minutes in the bend it was for a, a short arm jolt if you like as he went down on top of the tackler it was the very last thing that happened in the tackle you'll see it again and this will I'll pinpoint this it's still not happening don't worry about this now watch folks as he comes down on top of Hasler there that's what he went for 10 minutes for McCabe will go on in 21. He's just had a bit of a chat to Chris Close there. In fact, Close has come off now. And Cleal's been told by McCabe to go to the centres, I'd say. There's McCabe talking to Cleal. As Chris Close leaves the field. The kick by Melrose is unsuccessful. By Jared, these two kickers are having a horror day. They've only managed to kick uh, one between them. 10-4 to Manly still. Hasler defeated. And for Graham Hughes and his view of the game at this point in time, here he is. For Canterbury, a man down. Ray, uh, this is where Manly got to really take control, try and win the match right at this very possible time. Start boring right up the middle of the rucks. Canterbury, a man down. Bring them all into the centre and then send the ball wide. It's obvious in my mind. Hasler, Paulson, shoulder charge from Batiste, and when a shoulder charge misfires, nothing can look more humiliating. Vorton, Matthew Loft receiving attention in back play for Manley. The kick for Melrose. It's an area of the Canterbury game that I think highlights what I said to Graham Hughes earlier. I said they look to be loose. They, they don't have, seem to have the zip in their game that we've come accustomed to. Even a simple thing like a charge down, there doesn't seem to be any chase through. And players coming back onside. We can see that players out wide here, Peter Kelly and Terry Lamb, still aren't in an onside position. Maybe Wednesday has taken its toll on the defending premiers. Well, Peter Kelly didn't play. <laughs> That's sufficient evidence for you to take the victory in this one. Here's Johnston. Tunks looks as though he might have damaged an a, a, a knee or a, an ankle. He's gone to ground, Tunks. So with Tunks out of the play, they're really playing with 11 now. 
through Langmack to Kelly, back to Langmack. Held by Bosted, or oh, Matthew Loft it was. Fires it out the back door. And Chris Mortimer is almost uh, into an opening. Five gone, tongue slipping very badly. So it's with uh, Lamb, he kicks looking for the line. Shearer's taking his time. Gurr's going back faster. And here's Gurr coming up with it now to the 22 where he's met and put down by Billy Johnston and Terry Lamb. That's McCabe, just absolutely pinching 10 metres. Up the middle where Graham Hughes suggested Manley should be going at this very point. That was just too easy. McCabe sauntered out of dummy half and made 10 or 12 metres and Warren Ryan wouldn't be happy with that sort of flimsy defence around the rucks. Is Daly getting a hand down to Cochran, then to Vorton. Vorton's into an opening. He's picked up Des Hasler. That was a tackle there, right there from Canterbury Steve Mortimer that had to be made, let me tell you, because uh, Potter was going to be faced with a lot of traffic. Here comes the traffic now. Vorton, Bosted, brilliant piece of play by Bosted. Can he make it? Yes, he scores. Oh, that's a superb piece of play by Kerry Bosted. You won't see too much more intelligent football than that from Kerry Bosted. Beautiful stuff. Just when it looked like it had broken down, Bosted put it on the boot to keep the ball in play. The captain, Vorton, he's been creating havoc for uh, Canterbury with some of his attacking play today. He floated this one out over the head of one and it came down on the half volley to Kerry Bosted's boot. And then he changed course and got in between them. And then when it came down to a test of speed, it was boasted all the way in daylight second. The Manly defence, uh, the Manly attack has shown that the Canterbury defence can be beaten here as Vorton slipped his way through some flimsy tackles, shot the pass over the top to Kerry Bosted, who got a foot with him, George Best style, became a chase between him then and Chris Mortimer. Bosted beat him to the ball and you'll never see a better individual try than that one. 22 minutes of the match remaining. The goal kicking has been horrible to say the least. And Melrose has kept up the average for both of them. Still, there's only really, yes, there's one goal in the entire match. Exchange of words between Steve Mortimer and Terry Lamb. Vorton. This is Shearer. He's had it taken from him. Canary with the ball. Kelly's lost it. Shearer comes up with it for Manley. So we're back where we started from. to Ryan, on to Melrose. Melrose pops the pass off to McCabe. He goes ahead a couple of more metres. Play 10 metres into um, the Canterbury half. A replacement going on for Manley Graham. Yes, he called it only a few moments ago. Darren Rogers for Phil Daly. Rogers for Daly, which means that Cleal would come back into the forwards, would he not? And Glenn yes. Ryan would push up into the front row. So it's Melrose, a hand down to Hasler, gets a one-handed pass away to Vorton. Vorton turns it out to Shearer. Shearer's inside the 32. Shearer getting out of a tackle, shaping the kick, giving it to Hasler. Hasler tackled on the Canterbury 22. Daly is off. Darren Rogers is on as the ball is pumped out to McCabe and then back inside to Paulson. Spun across to Shearer. Turns it inside for Cleal. Outside now for Paul Vorton. Scored as Manley made the ball do the work, and that is the ball game. Manley have carved the Premiers up here today, and it's a, a very, very happy Manley camp here at the moment. Let me tell you, Cleal and Vorton played prominent roles in this try. The ball was simply kept alive, they kept pumping it around the ground. McCabe to Paulson. Paulson spun it out very wide. That was probably the pass that mattered. Shearer to Cleal, Cleal to Vorton. And it was Paul Vorton who has had a dominant role in this match today, scoring the try. Canterbury banks down defences in tatters here, and we see a tremendous interchange of passes between the Manly players there from Shearer back to Cleal on the outside of Vorton. And Vorton caps off a great game with this fine try. The 
kick by Melrose again is unsuccessful. Manly leading by 18 points to four. Chance here, a chance for Cleo. It's a try. A try for Noel Cleo. Well, the Eagles, everything they're touching now is turning to gold. This was Broman getting his arms free, looking for a runner. And it was towed ahead by young Cochrane. Cleal, showing tremendous speed, was able to beat the Canterbury uh, runners and beat them easily. Capping a fine game for Noel Cleal. Well, Canterbury had to try something, but that probably wasn't the tactic. It was a loose pass, towed ahead by Cochrane. Noel Cleal set chase with all the pace of the centre, and he says, thank you very much. Melrose, he's kicked the goal. Sending Manley to a 24 points to four win, a lead at the moment. Scrum win to Canterbury. Potter taken by Gurr. Well, they were not behind the last line of forwards in the scrum, and that's a penalty against Cleo. He'll put him in the bin. He has. Cleo to the sin bin for a professional foul. And an early shower. applause for Noel Cleal after playing so very well for his team. Gillespie. Langmack. Mortimer. Broman. Cut-out pass to Farrah. Put down out there by Darren Rogers. There's the siren. It's all over here at Brookvale with uh, a shock result. I, I, I think even Manly supporters would agree. Sure, they expected to win, but not by 24-4. to 4. Here's the score. Shearer, Close, Bosted, Vaughton, Cleal. Five tries for the Eagles. Melrose only kicked two goals. Heavens knows what the score would have been with him kicking well today. And Steve Mortimer scoring a try for Canterbury.